Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of the Detour Podcast. We've got a very, very special edition because, of course, we've got a special guest. And, uh, of course, it's Grace Brown, who's finished second at Liège, Bath on Liège, uh, on the weekend. She's a regular now on the Detour because I think last time you are on the show, I think we promised you a ride at Liège. <laughs> or we had it all sorted. And <laughs> yeah, I think every time I've been on here, it's been something about Liège, so <laughs> yearly but appearance just, around the and, Liège time. That's right. And, of course, John Trevorrow, don't need to do an introduction for if he, he's a regular on the show. But, yeah, Grace Brown, obviously uh, the person that we're interested in getting some insights from. How have you pulled up from a fantastic ride? Yeah, pretty good. I, it's a, a bit of a bittersweet time, I think, after Liège because it marks the end of the classics season for us. Um, so, yeah, it was it was an awesome race, but it's also sad that um, we have to wait an, another whole year until we can race the classics again. <laughs> Look, I, I tell you, it was an awesome race. Uh, we're going to talk about the men's one in a minute as well. Uh, two of the best races uh, for the whole uh, summer. And here we are. Uh, for, for those on the podcast who aren't watching it, they won't uh, won't see this, but we're showing some highlights from, from 19K or 20K out. And you've just jumped up the road, which was a really uh, I- I- impressive move. Um but I just wonder, you lost Brody Chapman, who's been going so well for you guys with FDJ this summer uh, through the classics. And she had, I don't know what, it was just a, a, a puncture or whatever, something put her out of it around about that time. You would have really found her handy in the finale. Yeah, she's um, she's really stepped up. I mean, she's always been a really strong rider, um, but uh, it's become even more obvious this year. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was super unfortunate that at the base of Lara Dute, she'd actually dropped her chain and bent a link in it. Um, oh, so as soon it. as we hit the, the steep gradient, she had a mechanical and um, had to swap bikes. So she missed being in the finale, which would have been awesome, but we made do with what we had. They just showed uh, on the highlights that Dan's got running. They just showed that spot where you were up the road. Annemiek's ridden away from, you know, just destroyed everyone, really. Caught you right on the bend. It was only about 300 metres from the top, but uh, she went by you. You know, you'd already spent a lot of bickies and you couldn't do anything about it. And here you are. You're doing a lot on the front. Um, trying to close it. So you had the two of the, the, the SD Works girls as well, and good bike wise, you know, <laughs> Bollering and, and, and Milman uh, Passio. And even though the, so there's really four of you ready to chase, plus Elisa uh, um, um, Borghini, but there's nothing you could do about it. Yeah, we like, there was no question about um, the fact that we were trying pretty hard to chase Anamik down. Um, but yeah, in the end, she was just so strong on this day and I think just had better legs than everyone else um, and a huge commitment to to get to the finish line solo. So, yeah, there's no denying that she was the best rider on the day. Yeah, she, she certainly, and she certainly uh, spends a lot of effort. But here, here's your sprint which was sensational. So, um, you know, you got some classy bike riders here, Vollering, who won this race last year. Uh, but you, you just let them go, and you just stepped out, and you were going, you, you won it by nearly a length, and you were going away. So where's that speed come from? Grace, you turned into a sprinter. <laughs> I think I've uh, always sort of had a, had it a bit, but um, it's more learning how to use it and, learning what type of sprinter I am. Like I need I need there to already be a bit of speed in the bunch. So it was really great that my teammate um, initiated the sprint and um, opened it up for the group early. And then I was able to come from behind um, with that speed already. And it's a little bit similar to how I attack and get away um, in other points of the race. So, Marta Cavalli, she has had, uh, you know, your teammate, you know, she's had an amazing uh, summer, of course, uh, and, you know, you know, been the, the, the highlight of the classics. But when did she make that decision 
to actually lead you out for the sprint? When, when did that change? Because I assumed that you were actually be riding for her. You seemed to be when you were trying to close the gap at first. When did you guys change the uh, change it around? Yeah, it, did, it didn't look like it was a decision until the very last moment because I closed some gaps coming into the finish. But, yeah, that was just because I was in the position to do it um, and Marta wasn't quite there. Uh, but we decided on the descent um, that I was going to sprint. So we knew that come the finishing straight that that would be how it would play out. It, it seems from afar that there's really good chemistry uh, amongst your team. There was a great photo uh, at the finish line. I don't know if you uh, – there it is there. Um, and you can just see what it meant, particularly for your teammates, uh, for your result at Liège. Yeah, it's um, – it, it, it is really special, I think. It's not common for teams to come and um, cheer their teammates at the podium and the fact that they came and cheered me when it was second and not first was uh, super nice and I think it would be something, um, yeah, that would be really great to see more of in the pro peloton. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've, we've got a really good chemistry and it's, building and getting stronger um, every race that we do, working out how to work together. I think, like, there were some races earlier in the season that we didn't quite get it right. But, um, yeah, especially these last couple of races, we're nailing it. Well, is that is that your is that your uh, background going beep beep beep, uh, Dan? Was that something? No, in, it's, in not, your... it's not me. No, I think Grace, oh, is, that, Grace is more popular than I am. Oh, okay. no, I just, I just, I, well, any chance I can get to, to, to have a go at Dan, I do, but obviously I'm not wrong. It was a beautiful shots on the po podium, Grace. You, you know, obviously were very happy with, with, with second. I mean, it's second time second, uh, and I know you'd love to win it, but, but you were, you, you were beaming. Uh, Anna Meek, of course, was beaming, but Voring. Did not look happy. <laughs> yeah, there's been a little bit of commentary about this. Um, uh, well, give us some juice. I, Come on, Grace. <laughs> no, I, I, feel, I feel a little bit bad that, um, uh, yeah, I've juxtaposed Demi into looking, um, yeah, the opposite of happy. But, <laughs> yeah, but basically, I think, I think I explained this on Twitter. It's um, gotten a little bit of... Um, sort of following uh, that I commented that, you know, if I get the chance to to give my best race and do my do my all um, and whatever result that brings, I'm always smiling. Like yeah. even after Ghent Webelgum where I um, had some attacks off the front and, you know, really tried for the win, um, I was so happy after the race, uh, even though on the result sheet I was like, 40th or something um yeah but yeah that's just my approach because i don't yeah. think i would be able to do this pro profession if um every time i lost a race i was upset but but i think that that is so smart in professional sports not just cycling is that whole mentality around process like if you take result out of it and you follow the process you train well you prepare well you execute as as good as you can then do you think that you see, you know, sometimes other riders, whatever, they focus too much on the result and not the process? Yeah, I mean, the a lot of – there's a lot of things in, in the sport that are geared around the outcome. So teams want – teams want results. Um, sponsors want results. Uh, you know, you get a lot more attention from the media and uh, your fans when – when you get a result, but yeah, yeah, I think as an athlete to um, be good to yourself, you need to separate yourself from that and know that, you know, you just have to give your best every, every day. And if that brings a result, then that's awesome. But it's also awesome if it doesn't on a particular day. So um yeah, it's, it's hard to keep that positive mindset sometimes, but I think it's important if you want to have a um, long career and be happy in it. 
Yeah. Do you do you find moments, particularly in the team bus, you know, in that environment where you know you have that mentality, and it is it is such a good mentality to have, but you can sort of at times call out when things do get a bit toxic because you're talking about chemistry before. That must be really important trying to keep everyone buying into that sort of similar mentality. Yeah, I think. Um... I mean, as as a leader on a team, I think it's particularly important to spread that sort of mentality as well because, um, yeah, everyone else feels uh, the emotions of a leader and if, if the leader's <clears throat> disappointed with their results, then the rest of the team feels also disappointed with how they helped them. Um, so, yeah, the, the feeling spreads. So I think it's important. And if if you can be happy in races, then you're more likely to do a better job and you're more likely to encourage others around you to do a good job. So, yeah. Well, yeah, I know, I, know you're, <laughs> I know you're not uh, teammates anymore, but uh, it's good to see Spratty on the way back. She's uh, The last uh, few classics, she's got better and better. She was uh, right in the mix. Uh, I think she finished 10th overall. It was, she did finish 10th. Uh, she wasn't too far back, but uh, she's sort of getting up the pointy end. So it's uh, good to see that, um, especially coming to, to the uh, big tours coming up. Yeah, definitely. She's still my teammate at heart. Um, I've got a lot of respect for Spratty and uh, she's, yeah, been on a journey. I think she um, uh, she posted something about, you know, she was 10th place at liege Basson liege last year as well, but very different circumstances at that time. She was realising that something wasn't quite right with her legs and she was yeah. her performances were going down. Um, but this time, a year later, um, 10th sort of brings a lot of hope to her uh, that she's getting back to her normal level and, um, yeah, I bet we'll be seeing her really contending the finals again soon. Got a couple of live comments. Kirsty Baxter says, if he got his shopping basket on the shelf behind him, market day today, John? <laughs> so trick, mate. And then, of course, she says, GB, bloody legend, uh, Mitchell is very happy to have you on the show. And Andy Matthew says, hi, guys. Congrats, Gracie, on a fantastic ride on Sunday. I think it was Grace, but we'll, we'll let That's that right. Stay. People can call me Gracie now that now that Gracie Elvin's <laughs> retired. Um, yeah. loud. <laughs> yeah. now, now, obviously, you were talking about, you know, the, the downside is it wraps your classics campaign. It has been a, a really good classics campaign. You obviously 7th at Flanders. 12th at uh, Roubaix, but I, I couldn't help but doing a bit of Instagram stalking and you post around Roubaix where you were saying, I could write an essay about those 125 Ks, but I'll keep it to some dot points. You surfed the crazy Palo for 40 K fighting for position. You crashed 2 K before the first cobble sector, chased for three sectors. They had fun battling through sectors 14 to 6. You blew with a double whammy of, I can't pronounce this, Camphen and Pavli. Uh <laughs> Had nothing, had nothing for my little group sprint and finished 12th, but you shared lots of smiles and hugs with your team. Now, Roubaix, how was the experience? Uh, it was a battlefield, really, like uh, start to finish. Like, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely a race like no other. Um, but uh, it was so fun. I can't wait for next year to, to have another go. Um and I think uh, it's one of those races where you have to go in knowing that, like, every everything's going to be chucked at you and you're going to overcome, like, multiple setbacks and you just have to keep moving forward. Um, and, yeah, like, crashing before the very first cobble sector, I was like, damn, my, <laughs> my race is possibly over already. Um but then you just fight and you get back in the mix. Um, and, yeah, anything's possible there. But I was I was a week post, um, uh, two weeks post-COVID, mm. so I wasn't, yeah. wasn't in the shape that I wanted to be. Um, but, yeah, 
overall I was I was pleased. Very impressive. Thanks. I'm very impressed. I'm impressed not just with your ride, but the fact that Dan did so much uh, research on all of that. That's well, mate, even I'm more impressive. impressive. <laughs> I'm impressed. This is the scale that I put you on, Grace. Like, I don't do research for any old guest. No, I'm going to get this no, one right. See. <laughs> now, um, it's exciting what's happening in women's cycling. I mean, there's so many, there's all the new races. Uh, you now have uh, a women's tour de France, which, you know, is brilliant. I'm still hoping to, to get there for that, but we're, we're, we've got a few things up in the air at the moment, but I'd love love to be there for it. Uh, and, and so what do you, do you plan to do, the Women's Tour de France and the the, uh, the Giro, or just one? Um, I'm planning just to do the Tour de France. So, um, yeah, I'll skip the Giro. Some of my teammates will probably do um, both those races, but yeah, f- for me, I just I just wanted to do one. I'm also targeting the um, Women's Tour of Britain a little bit earlier, so it would have been a, a big load to do all three races. How how are you finding the build up to the Women's Tour de France? Because obviously, you know, you, you probably most interviews you do someone had asked you about it and we know the history of the women's giro and that was known as the the tour de france for female bike riders but you're really feeling like wow this is going to be big yeah i think at the start of the year so many teams have you know put the tour de france as their number one priority for the year there's heaps of media attention about it um like we even had to go and do, you know, full media day with Zwift um, for the promotion of the event. Um, Yeah, and I don't know, there's just a lot of anticipation. It's going to be, it's going to be pretty special, I think. Well, your French team as well. That adds another Mm. layer. It's like like they're two down under. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, basically, basically the maybe even one up maybe even one up from that <laughs> yeah. one notch up. <laughs> no, the, the team are very focused on it um we're actually going next week to uh do recon of um majority of the stages so i'm looking forward to that now you mentioned earlier that you did uh have covid um it has been a bit of a mixed bag on how it's affected you know not just cyclists but athletes across the 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 globe have you noticed any sort of residual effects um from having covid uh not no i haven't had any um lasting effects of covid apart from the fact that my form definitely dropped um yeah it's actually quite interesting because i was a, a really good level um, before I got COVID and I wasn't quite getting the results that I wanted. Um, But then I got, yeah, I had COVID and at Liège, I I didn't feel great, but I think I just got back that battling mentality that um, got me where I needed to go. (laughs) So sometimes it's more about, yeah, the brain than the legs. If he... Now, of course, one of the uh, important races for you th- this year has got to be the World Championships in Australia. It's on a course that actually suits you down to the ground. Um, that will, you know, obviously be a big part of your uh, of a year. How, how are you going to prepare for that? Yeah, it's, it's um, a difficult year because, yeah, obviously we have the Tour de France, which is a really big, um, a big goal, but also a you know, it's going to be a big load both mentally and physically. I'm not sure how I'm going to come out of that. But, um, yeah, I guess after, after that I will turn my focus to Worlds once we've done the Com Games. They come, like, just a few days after the Tour de France, which will be interesting. But, um, uh, yeah, I think the, the the Worlds are a bigger goal for me. Um and they're a big goal for all Australians. Like I think that there's not a single. Um, I mean, I don't. I can't speak for the men, but I know that the women are very keen to be on the team uh, this year and and race in Wollongong. So it's going to be a bit of a um, 
I hope. Yeah, a bit of a fight, but uh, hopefully it doesn't fight to be in the team. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, if, if Spratty and, and, and Caleb, Spratty and Caleb, it's in their backyard. It's, it's their yeah. home race, you know. Well, there's a few that it's in their backyard. But, um, yeah. Mm. yeah, me as a Melbourne person, I can't quite claim that. <laughs> well, it's going to be a big um, second half of the year for you. you got your yellow jersey, multiple Commonwealth Games gold medals, and then you'll scoop the rainbow band, so... Jeez, yeah. coming into the Bay Crits, you'll be uh, yeah. a big marketing <laughs> tool there, Iffy. Yeah, I expect um, some some big uh, start, start money, money. Oh, yeah. next year, Iffy. <laughs> a lot of cashies. <laughs> we'll line up some cashies for the public speaking. We'll we'll really just well, flood it. Tell, tell uh, Elliot I'll, I'll uh, get the honeymoon suite again. So uh, <laughs> it worked last time. It's probably a bit, bit old fashioned yeah. now, but uh... <laughs> yeah, you've worked it out. You 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 know how to get me along to things is uh, through Elliot, not not from through me. Just buy Elliot off, and you'll have me. <laughs> I'll, try, I'll keep trying. I'll keep trying. Now, I got, I, you'll love this story. So, uh, I'm up at the Gambia at the moment, but uh, I was up here about a, just over a week ago with a few of my, my cycling mates, and we had a, a wonderful three days, a bit of riding, a bit of. Went to the market. A bit of, uh, a bit of all of that. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> spent some time at Mitchelton and some beautiful Mitchelton wines. But we also uh, we, we went for a cruise down the river. Um, and we pulled in, into Jerry's lovely party boat. You know it well because it was the same boat I took you guys up to Shadow Deville in. <laughs> and we had the girls from the Green Edge team plus Elliot. And we went in. So I did the same thing. Called in a Jerry's party boat, pulled in at Deville, took them all in for a wine tasty. And the woman looking after us, after a few minutes, was showing us some lovely wines and whatever. She went, John, you brought the Green Edge girls here a couple of years ago. I said, I did. So suddenly all the really good wines were coming out. In oh, the, uh, perfect. Because the, old, uh, the, old, the oldest Shiraz uh, um, producing vines in the world are at Shadow to Bilk. So yeah, we got a taste of that. All thanks to uh, her fond memories of you ladies. It was a great day. Uh, well, I'm not sure she brought those out when we were there. So. Yeah, how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, we've got another live comment from Tom Maloney. He says, it's getting difficult to tell whether it's Matt Heyman's do or die attitude or whether it's the women like Grace that are setting the standard for Aussie riders. Um, do you feel, Grace, like a responsibility being, you know, a professional athlete, but obviously a successful one as well, that sort of element of giving back, like whether it be, you know, tips for young riders or, you know, those sort of things? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I become more and more conscious of the fact that, you know, um, people follow what I do and I, I'm setting an example for, you know, Australia, uh, Australian athletes, Australian cyclists um, and young women in sport. Um, and, yeah, I, I want to set a, a positive example um, and also give back uh, in a way that, you know, other, other people can follow in my footsteps in a successful way. Um, so, yeah, I'm always looking for ways that I can, you know, touch back with the community a little bit. Got another comment. Uh, Diane Hannon, she says, been listening while walking. So much to say. Great guest, Grace Brown. Liège was the best. Congrats on your podium. FDJ now has another good reason to follow. Wonderful to see Brody finding her form too. Women's racing has finally arrived. Tour de France and Worlds, they will be a cracker. Yeah, so it was interesting, uh, Grace. I saw uh, a piece from uh, just on uh, one of the websites uh, last night or today, uh, whereas UCI President uh, La Partier, uh has said that we can't increase, we can't put any more races, women's races on the calendar until we increase the size of the women's peloton. What do you think of those remarks? Uh, well, it's, it's true, I think, because at the moment we're really at capacity um, with the riders uh, that we have on the teams because uh, I think... I can't remember the exact numbers, but the World Tour races from last year, it was around 50 days or less than 50 days of World Tour races last year. This year it's up to 71. Um, yeah. And teams are really, like, you need a double roster and some teams don't have a double roster. And as soon as, 
you know, they have a few injured riders or people come sick or whatever happens, then we're starting with not a full team. Um, so, yeah, I think the next step is the team's growing, but the problem is that we don't, you know, the depth is the depth is building each year, but it's not building at that rate that we can yeah. really do all those races. Um, yeah, at the moment, riders are getting spread a little bit thin. And I suppose it's, uh, you know, it, it's in, that, that problem's increased by the fact of not just COVID, but so many people getting other sicknesses. You know, there's all those different mm. flus that are going around at the moment. It's really making teams struggle to be able to put, uh, uh, for the men's that are going through the same same issues, actually. Yeah, yeah you, you see know, the you problem in the teams. men's peloton and it's, and it's bigger in the women's peloton because we don't have the same resources. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's an issue. Well, and that must affect, you know, the healthy riders on the team because you'd obviously have a set program that you want to stick to, but if they're sort of running thin, you know, that can affect your program and preparations later on in the year. Yeah, definitely. And you see, you're see, you seeing, like, leaders on teams being, uh, yeah, usually as a leader you have your set program and it, it's a little bit more secure than um, some of the other riders on the team. But... Yeah, you you're getting brought into like extra races, and then it's you know affecting your ability to really pull something off um, because you're coming in tired. So mm. yeah. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. If he, you make a noise, please don't bump the table. Uh, we'll be back <laughs> soon with more detail after these quick words from the sponsors. Look at this bike. You think it's just a bike, right? But it's not. <clears throat> it's a bike. 374 people are looking at. This guy, this girl, them, all looking at it. People from here, there, and wherever this is. People that are looking for a bike. Or just a piece of it. Amateurs, semi-amateurs, and pro-amateurs. This guy wants this bike, but with this crank and these bars. This could be the perfect match, but not this one. This girl has a bike to sell, and thousands of people might purchase it. Eyes on Bikes help grow small businesses. His, hers, yours, and the latest data and insights help those businesses keep moving. We are the world's number one bike marketplace with over 500,000 products and 900 brands, where buyers and sellers are brought together in a place where a bike is never just a bike. Bike Exchange, where the world buys, sells, learns, and rides. Are you dreaming of the ultimate cycling holiday? Mumu Cycling is the best in the business. Official tour operators for all Grand Tours and Monuments, you will ride the best climbs. Enjoy VIP access and race viewing all hosted by some of the world's best pros, including 17-time Tour de France rider and Paris-Roubaix champion Stuart O'Grady. Start planning your ultimate holiday at www.mumucycling.com. Thanks again to Bike Exchange and Moomoo Cycling. Had a good chat with uh, Marcel today, Ify, about the Tour de France. It sounds like they've got an amazing trip planned, so uh, we'll be getting amongst it. Uh, I told him to pack the guitar, the axe. We might be able to bust out a bit of cold chisel late at night. So if you haven't booked, uh, get on moomoocycling.com. Uh, and uh, Ify, you're chilling at the bit because you fly out to the Giro, what, next week? On Monday. Yep, yep. Mm. Yeah, Monday arrive Tuesday. I've got uh, three or four days in uh, Budapest. I've never been to Hungary, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it should be a great year. I'm re really excited. Mm. What's the uh, cuisine like in Hungary? There'd be a lot of stews and stuff on there. I don't know. Yeah, what I've, race I've you been, been, have you been there? Yeah, and it is stews and potatoes. 
beautiful. I used to love traveling with John, particularly around France, when he'd try and study the menu and he'd just throw it away and he, he'd go like, you know, pizza or whatever, but the desserts. It was always good watching you you'd go, ice cream, cream, and you sort of do this sort of mountain hand signal. And then you, <laughs> that's totally, partly, that's very true. That's very true. But I didn't go to me. I always reckon in France, and a bit in Italy too, go for their what is their dish of the day. They, when you have, they get mm. the dish of the day, not like in Australia, that'll be whatever they've got left over. The dish of the day in France and in Italy is what they're famous for. And it's always great. So for me, the dish of the day yeah. and a big dessert. Yeah. I, I, I could do a whole podcast on food because let's be honest, everyone eats. You know, I love food. <laughs> I love cooking. But what is your go-to dish, uh, Grace? Like, you know, obviously professional athlete, or look after yourself, but do you get into the kitchen and, and what, what's your signature? Oh, for me, cooking. Um, oh, I, I don't know. It depends if I'm cooking for myself. It gets a bit boring, but um, yeah. When I'm at home in Australia, my husband always likes a lasagna, so that's probably one of the staples. Or, oh. <laughs> yeah, some like slow-cooked meat. Mm. Do you use oh, the yeah. fresh lasagna sheets or the, the hard stuff? That Yeah, no, always go fresh. We mm. have a, a nice little Italian shop around the corner from our house. So yep. That was a yeah. test. You passed it. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> now, I thought, I thought we should uh, uh, just touch on, we've been talking about the, the women's liage, best one liage, which was a great race. And Anna Meek was mm. uh, amazing. She's sort of 39 years of age. She keeps stepping up and it, it was great effort. I reckon she's getting she 39? More, yeah. Yep. I reckon she's getting yeah. more untidy on the bike as she gets older. She just <laughs> seems to be all over the damn bike. It doesn't matter. She still goes, so it's amazing. But yeah, it is, it is interesting to to watch her style on the bike. You wonder how she's getting the power out, but um, it works. Yeah. It works, yeah. But I thought we should touch on the, the men's uh, liage, uh, best on liage, because it was a bloody bike race. And we've been listening yeah. to the stories, you know, the Ripco of Annapol. Uh, oh, you know, geez, he, he was copping early, it. From his early days you know, as, a, as a, uh, a junior, under 23 when he won the, or a junior actually, won the world title, title, title beat Rowan Dennis. And everyone was saying, this guy is going to be the next Eddie Merckx, blah, blah, blah. And then he's bigger than Ben Hur in Belgium. But all these little things, he seemed to be getting a little bit of a swelled head. He's right in the world's last year where he seemed to be riding – you know, for himself, not a smart ride for 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 that art and all of that. And then he had that terrible crash uh, in, in Italy. But on Sunday we saw the real Avenipol. Now I know what they're talking about. That was yep. one of the most powerful rides I've ever seen. Mm. Yeah, even his attack um, on Lara Du was just insane. The speed that he got up on that hill. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, we've got some highlights uh, that we've poached off uh, YouTube, if anyone's watching from ASO. He's back, we were, he's back we were skidding. He was going that hard when he took off. He, 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 he was skidding his back wheel. Yeah. Uh, and that, it was just amazing. Well, he's li he's living up to the hype now because remember we, yeah. we had Stuart O'Grady on the show, uh, what was it, a couple of weeks ago just before Roubaix, and there was obviously the talk when, you know, he pushed – one of the Ineos riders out of the road yeah. to hold his spot. And the whole chatter was like, mate, you haven't justified to have that level of confidence. Um, but, geez, he's gone out and silenced a lot of people after this ride. Well, he never looked back once. You know, from the time he took off on, uh, uh, on the initial climb, he had 20-odd K out. There was not, he did not look back. He didn't care what anyone was doing behind. He just went. When he caught the, the different guys, he just – you can stay there as long as you can. You wouldn't worry about them, and he just went for the whole way. It was just a super, super impressive ride. We we're talking earlier, Grace, about you know culture and taking you know the focus away from you know wins and losses and focus on the process. You know, this team has gone in with Patrick Lefevre saying you know riders are racing for their contracts. You know, in terms of like yeah. the opposite approach, um, and essentially saved the classics for Quick Step. Yeah, it's a fairly. Um heavy weight to to hold on his shoulders and uh, yeah such a young rider to be able to just go through with that pressure 
Mm. Especially after Ella Philippe. I mean, maybe the fact that Ella Philippe crashed, um, yeah, gave Remco the green light to just, you know, go all or all or nothing. Like he yeah, knew that probably. that's yeah. what he had to do. Mm. Um, that was their only chance and it pulled off. So. A terrible crash too, as you're talking. I don't know if you've got any vision of that, uh, uh, Dan, but... It, you know, quite a few went down, you know, a, a large group. Uh, and uh, Ella Philippe has made a mess of himself. I think it was four broken ribs, mm. you know, um, broken shoulder, punctured lung. No, he was a mess, you know. This is the crash. Yeah. 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 yeah that's the I one. think it was yeah. quite a high speed as well, like 70k yeah. an hour or something. Yeah. Yeah. And Bardet, it was, you know, it was really nice to see. I think yeah, you just saw them going down the side there then. Bardet was sort of also over the edge, but he could hear uh, um, Julian crying out. So he went down to help him because, you know, what else do you do, I guess? And mm. uh, uh, took the uh, ambos for four or five minutes and he was, he was screaming out in pain and couldn't feel his legs and, you know, cause he's got uh, some serious fractures and stuff. So, yeah, a bit of a mess. A mm. uh, couple more comments. Uh, Sam Allen says, great ride, Grace. So impressive to attack and then hold on for the sprint with two thumbs up. And uh, Benji Nason, he's a superstar on uh, YouTube. He says, Grace, uh, Grace, <laughs> keep it up, champ. <laughs> so you can Benji as well. And then Pete, obviously, talking about Remco, says he's a freak on the power. So yeah. there's a couple of live comments. Yeah. Now, yeah. You, better, you better get your questions in because we're about to wrap things up, Ify. So if anyone's got Jeez. a live question. Wow, or this is a short uh, episode. We haven't even got on the two Romandi prologue. We're going to go, yeah. But I just was um, – <laughs> I, I see that young uh, – another young Belgian who got second could turn uh, Hermans, who uh, – with Intermarsha, he's a, a, a sight like crosser who's come over to the road. He's like 25, 26. But it was impressive because he rolled uh, Van Ert for second. Uh, and it was also Wood Van Ert's first uh, Liège. Um, and it was good to see, you know, him coming back and stepping up. Um, but he he, uh, he, he he came out and just said that uh, Van Ert was too good and too strong. So uh, mm -hmm. interesting to see how they... Combined for the worlds uh, in Wollongong, can they sort out their differences? But it'll be, it'll be good to see. Yeah, yeah will be. Uh, yeah. And then obviously Rowan Dennis uh, just got pipped. If he at Romany overnight. Yeah, so uh, Ethan Hayter, the, the young Ineos uh, Englishman who's, uh, you know, world track champion has come over into the road and very impressive. Um, he only just beat uh, Rowan by like four seconds and I think uh, Thomas was equal third at 10 seconds with Gross Chartner. Uh, and uh, the young Italian ride for Bike Exchange, J.C., uh, Matteo Sabrero. Control yeah, champ. It was Italian but I'm not champion. He was, uh, I think, it was sixth at 13 seconds. Paddy Bevan did a really good ride, so he's uh, re recovered. Um, and Ben O'Connor was up there, 20 seconds down. Luke Plapp, Lucas Plapp was 22 seconds down, 35th. I would have expected him to be challenging for that, so I don't know whether you know he's just slightly off form or anything happened to him. I have to you know, check that one out. Michael Storer also back a bit because he was going so well. Uh, just the best last um, was the footage that GCN posted on Twitter of Brandon McNulty almost missing the start. Did you see that? Where yeah, literally got... he, he was done and dusted and they had to just put him in at the last second. No time to uh, get yourself settled. And they literally said, right, off you go, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a come close guess. to missing the start of a TT, Grace? No, it always feels like you're coming close to that, but um, yeah, you usually, you're usually so worst, like, yeah. anxious about getting there on mm. time that you get there early. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got Terence Anders says, Hi, guys. Will you be riding in this year's Amy Grand Fonda? Everyone is looking forward to seeing Dan in last year's unused kit. By the way, great kit from Apex Custom Clothing. You're going to be doing Amy's? Yeah, we'll, we'll get along to it at the end of the year, Ify. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Benji's got one for you, Grace. He says, what do you expect your role to be at the Tour de France, Femmes? Uh, will you have a free role or has that not been discussed yet? Um, yeah, we haven't we haven't gone into specific details yet um, and I think it will unfold a bit more once we see the stages. But, um, yeah, at the moment we're talking about potentially identifying one of the earlier stages um, for me to take an opportunity for a win. Um, 
and then obviously the the mountains come in the last uh, few stages and I will most likely revert to a domestic role to support um, Cecily and Marta, my climbing teammates. Uh, we've got a thumbs up from Sam Billy, a long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> and uh, Peter, Peter Townley, he wants to know if he, uh, how do you think like the next era of riders are going to go in Belgium this season, particularly Cam Rogers? Well, where's the well, – I can't see his message there. Oh, so he, said, he said it in like – um, three separate messages. Oh. So how do you think? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, we, we've got, you know, just a, a plethora of young Aussies uh, really starting to go well in Belgium and handling the, 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 the cobbles. Um, so I, I'm just excited. Uh, I mean, I used to love, uh, I lived in, in, in Ghent, I used to love racing on, on the cobbles, bouncing all around the bloody place. Uh, but, um, yeah, we, we've got some seriously good young riders and uh, young Cam, you know, who's the, the, the son of Pete, um, he's going to be a, a serious athlete over the next couple of years. And, Grace, who are some of the riders to, that we should all be looking out for in the, uh, the women's peloton? Uh, Australian riders. Oh, I, um, anyone. We're an international Well, show. I'll start with Australian riders. I think okay. uh, Alex Manley um, has been really impressive. Uh, this has been her first cl- classics period because she used to, uh, before she did the track, she would um, come in mid-season for uh, bike exchange. But, yeah, she's raced her first classics and done super well. So I expect that she'll, yeah, Keep improving on that. And also Ruby Roseman Gannon um, has, yeah, had a similar um, introduction. So I'm looking forward to both of them um, progressing and becoming superstars of the future. Um, yeah, I don't know other riders from other other nationalities that you sort of don't... Um, They're under the radar. Like, <laughs> pay as much attention yeah. to like no, up fine. and yeah. from, There's a couple, from couple other good ones there. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> no stress. Now, before we do wrap things up, big shout out to Phil and Trish Liggett. They're over there, Kareka, if he having a great time. Yes, we're going to have a quick talk with uh, with Phil and Trish uh, and Lindy, but they're in the middle of going from one camp to the other today, but we'll talk to them in the next couple of days. Um, so for all of the work that uh, he's been doing with Kareka over the time, he, they'd never actually met so until uh, just two days ago when, when mm. uh, Phil and Trish finally got to Kareka and he said they're having an absolute ball. I did get a, a message from him the other day uh, that I had trouble deciphering. Um, so I'd say they had a very good night. Next day, hey, he hey, it. Alan Lang used to tell you a good quote, <laughs> loose lips sink chips, John. <laughs> uh, last one for you, Grace. Sam Allen wants to know, there's a lot of Australian Kiwi riders with FDJ. How does that team pick up riders from down under? Um, yeah. Just talent. Uh, yeah, they just, talent. they just like them. Um, so... What pe- most people don't realise is that the FTJ women's and men's teams are actually separate, so the process, I believe, would be different um, and it's not like a um, joint uh, joint thing that they look out for Aussie riders. But, um, yeah, I think uh, on the women's side, like, it's, yeah, it's a good cultural fit the the French are a bit more free than like say the Dutch teams so um that suits both Brody and I um in our personalities but yeah it's it's not necessarily you know um a strategy for the team to get Australian riders but it, it's just in these particular in- instances it's been a good fit mm. yeah all right. Well, we've really appreciated you being on the show, Grace. Do you get a bit of time off now? Do you get to put the feet up for a couple of weeks or anything going on a trip? Uh, just this week I've got a bit of downtime, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, as I said, next week we're off to recon the the stages of the Tour de France Femme. So um, that'll be a fairly heavy week, I suppose. 
Yeah. Well, we wish you all the best. We'll no doubt check in again, again with you soon. Anyone uh, wants to support the show, youtube.com forward slash the Detour Podcast. Anything you want to add before we go, Johnny? No, no just thanks heaps, uh, Grace, for coming on as always. Um, and uh, I'm sure we'll uh, connect with you when your winning stage is uh, at the Tour de France. <laughs> Bloody oh. My pleasure. What about when I don't win? You don't you don't want to talk hey, to me? Hey, hey. No, it's not about the results. We've already talked to you about this. It's about the process. We'll chat to you about the process. It's all good. Good yeah. on you, Grace. You're a legend. Thanks, yeah, Johnny. Thanks for having thanks me. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. See, See you, you soon. Bye. Cheers. Bye. This is the winning.